Grocery bills are so expensive these days, but now they don't have to be. Start getting cash back on your grocery shopping with the free Ibotta app and get cash back every time you shop. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code COMMAND when you register. Just go to the App Store, Google Play Store, and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code command that's i b o t t a in the google play or app store and use code command hi everybody uh, welcome to second in command we have a really good show today Tim. we have a great show I, it hasn't happened yet but my feeling is that, yes, at the end, it will be revealed to be a great show. Yeah. I'm Matt Walsh, in case you haven't listened to our show before. My name's Tim Simons. And if you haven't listened, I don't know how you ended up here now. Or why you would... Ju- I guess you would always jump into the most recent episode. Um, but our guest today is a friend and fellow actor that I got to work with on a show called Manhunt. And he's here... Where is that? Where, where, where would one find that show? It's going to be on Apple. It's on Apple now. Mm-hmm. Apple TV. Yes. Plus. plus Apple TV, <laughs> Apple Plus, Apple TV Plus. Okay, Hamish Linkletter, welcome to our uh, show. Thanks very much for having me, Matt and Tim. It's our <laughs> it's our pleasure. So there are so many. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, Hamish and I spent a year in Savannah, Georgia, back and forth working on the show, which uh, just came out like last week. And um, Hamish played Lincoln. I played Doctor. Uh, which Mudd. one? Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Not Mary Todd, not okay. the son. Robert, Will? Robert? Was his Robert? son's name Robert Todd? Yeah, I think Will died. Was Will the one that died? Your research is impeccable. <laughs> uh, there was Willie, Tad, Robert, etc. <laughs> <laughs> you've forgotten all the hard work you've done, I can tell. <laughs> but I, I want to talk about a stranger connection, which is... You worked with Julia Louis Dreyfus. That's right. On uh, a show called The New Adventures of Old Christine. Let's talk about that first. Oh, okay. I played her little brother, and she was my older sister. I lived in the uh, garage, maybe? I don't know. It was probably converted. She would get stressed. She'd come out, knock on my door. I would come out, usually in a robe and PJs, and we would uh, talk about her dating troubles. Um, And and then I was like, you know what you should really do is run for vice president. And on the show, that was you. That was my idea. That was your idea. So Veep was a spinoff. Wow, old Christine. Yeah. Yeah, she that's al- crazy. she was always cagey about who came up with the idea, probably for legal reasons. I thought Armando came up. That is wild. That's no, real... no, it was her fictional brother. <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's great. Was your experience? Obviously, they're very different styles of show. What was your experience like? We know Julia as someone who uh, like improvised a lot, and you know would kind of like really get into the minutia of things in a great way, and was a very sort of collaborative person. Was that your experience with her yeah, as well? She would just check in and check out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she, she, you know, she would just you know put her lines on my chest and, and then read them and, off and, of you and read them and say like maybe some more push-ups because I'd like more lines next week. <laughs> Broader chest would uh-huh. be useful for next week's episode. <laughs> no, we had like a. I feel like that's a lot of lat work too. Like a lot of back work is going to expand Sometimes the whole thing. Sometimes she would ask me to look away from her so she could just use my back uh, uh, oh. for her lines. Uh, no, we had like you know that the the multi camera live uh, audience <gasps> studio audience that was a live one. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. I, I mean, we weren't really live, but right. there, but there were real live people there yeah. and uh, it's yeah it's like the greatest job in the entire it's like a 60 hour work month you know I've never <laughs> done one of those I've never even done a guest star on a live with a real audience it's so cool yeah, uh, yeah you do you do these 20 hour work weeks and then the fourth week you're exhausted so they give it to you all yeah that makes sense yeah that makes how, sense. how did you meet did you meet Julia through that show or had you known her before that show no I met her when I was auditioning for it wow. uh, uh, yeah it was the first time like in the basement 
did we've kind of talked about this before did you have the same experience that we did i mean like she is a very open person um uh, well, at least to us, to you, she just would just put your just, just paint your li- her lines on you. But yeah. did you find yourself to be sort of as intimidated as we all were to be auditioning for her? Were you a, fa- a Seinfeld fan? Were you somebody that knew her work leading up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was totally uh, uh, blown away. I, I was terrified. I was so nervous all the time. But then she would tell me how to do my job correctly uh, <laughs> o- over and over. She would be like, "You say the line, and then you put the coffee cup down." There and it's funny. <laughs> what you were doing was not, but put the coffee cup there. down. There, adjustments. Yeah, yeah. And were there rehearsals in that show? Like on on the day? Yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. Yeah, you do your table read, then you go through the whole show for the writers, and then you go through the whole show for the producers. Um, I, I mean, for the studio the next day, and then you, and then the audience rolls in. I actually don't know if that's correct. I think that it was a while ago. That's and okay. Yeah. Again, I was just mainly holding and up was, the lines. And her husband Brad was writing on that show, right? Incorrect. Completely wrong. Brad was not a writer yeah. on Old Christine. No, he was. A, he was a writer on. Uh, uh, watching Ellie. Watching Ellie. Oh, yeah. sorry, I yeah. got that wrong. Apologies to the internet we're gonna have to we're not gonna edit that out we live in our mistakes <laughs> um you know i so we don't know each other super well uh and i want to get one thing out of the way but off mike we were trying to figure out where we had run into or, each other before there was one time where i was auditioning and i've always felt bad about this so this, oh. is good. this is going to be a little bit of a mea culpa clearing the air this is healthy okay oh, this is healthy Tim never says I'm sorry. This is really good for Tim. So <laughs> I'm sorry that I acted that way is or I'm sorry that you were offended. That's generally the kind of apology you're going to get at the end of this. <laughs> but so I was auditioning for so I was we were shooting in Baltimore and I happened to be up in New York and I got like an audition for a really small part in a movie mm-hmm. or uh, well, I actually don't know how it wasn't a huge part in a movie, but whatever. I like had to go audition and I was in the casting office and I had to catch a train back to Baltimore and I was in there and I think they just didn't notice that I was in the room yeah because like four or five people like kind of like would show up and then go in and then show up and then go in yeah and and then you showed up yeah and I and they were about to bring you in and And then they saw me me, buddy and they were and I was like I was like I'm really sorry to do this yeah I have to like I have to go catch a train and I had to like jump in front of you and I always I uh, and I don't know I always was I gracious I mean you were gracious and you weren't like hell no you're not gonna do it right um but it also seemed like something that you were like, I'm involved in something I don't want to be involved in. Really? And I had put, I put you in an awkward position that had nothing to do with you and that you should have never had any part of with any part of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I just wanted to say that was an awkward position to put you in. And I'm sorry that you were offended. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> Is that what you say? <laughs> when someone says, I'm sorry, do you say you're welcome? <laughs> <laughs> I, think I think you say I forgive you <laughs> or it's fine. <laughs> you know what? I kind of remember this. Ooh, um, ooh. No, I do. I do. I was like, oh my God, that's that guy who's taller than me. Um, and then he should go first. You know, it's like, uh, that's it, 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 it is by height. What people don't know about the it's business height is, yeah, before it's, beauty yeah. actually uh, is the saying. <laughs> um, did either of us get that job? Uh, did you play Tall Brian in the movie Whiskey Hotel Foxtrot <laughs> or Whiskey Tango Foxtrot? Did you play Tall Brian? Didn't. You didn't. Uh, didn't. You didn't. Were you any character that in that movie? Uh, no. Okay. Well, then neither neither one of us did. Ah, oh, damn it. The character's name was Tall Brian. Really? Yeah. Those moments are tricky, though. I'll have to say, I had a moment at a bagel shop in by my house where I went to get bagels, and there's two lines, and there's a sign that says pick up here and regular line here and it was confusing and there was this long line of like six people and then this guy gets in line in the short line and I'm like you mother bleeper do you know what I mean I just got so hot and then you get worked up about some yeah you didn't have any resent you had more your schedule in your head but in my mind this was a guy cutting the line and it's so hard for me and I'm sure it was hard for you to say that like I hate to do this 
but I had a thing with a guy like, uh, we're all in line. Like I came out hot and I was more like, <laughs> it was more just emotional. He's like, well, I, yeah, I come in and we started talking and then I'm like, I was wrong. Like I was wrong. The line kind of says, if you have a pickup order, this is the right line. He's like, yeah, but the guy was cool. He's like, I don't know why they do this. There should just be one stupid line. They, they came up with the system and it creates all this tension. I'm you like, I agree. They're, and they're pitting us against one another said. so we won't rise up against them. That's what I said. That's I said what it creates doing. this tension. I'm like, I'm so, and I was so apologetic. And then when I left, I had to fist bump. I'm like, hey, man, I'm really so like, because I wasn't mean, but you could hear it in my voice like, ah, uh, there's <laughs> a, excuse me, sir. You know, like, you know how you have that? Like at the airport, that makes me insane. If I see somebody like blatantly doing something like that, like everybody's waiting for whatever. It just gets me going. Yeah, I was that that guy, I was the guy, though. No, you weren't. This guy was. Go- no, this guy was much shorter than you. Oh, really? He wasn't much even willing to joke you. with you it about was like this. Short this Brian. Was, <laughs> it was short. Short Brian, Brian was there. And honestly, <laughs> and if you're that short, well, if you're bagel. that short, you shouldn't pull status. Like we all know, the town runs on height. So it's like you can do that if you're like six three, six four. If, I, if I may interrupt, the part of Tall Brian went to one Nicholas Braun. Cousin Greg. Whoa. 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 Wow. World's colliding. Can you do a little more research and see if he had to do an English accent? Because they made me do an English accent. <laughs> you got to let it go. Think... No, let man. Go. I don't think I was up for tall, Brian. Were there any other parts in that movie? <laughs> no, I think... <laughs> no, it's a one person show. It's so... like phone booth. It's wow. just a guy in a phone and then another guy in a phone booth. <laughs> all the you ever see that that movie Men, the Alex Garland movie? All the characters are played by Nick Braun. <laughs> I feel like I feel like that's uh, very true of my career that all the parts have been played by Nick Braun that were <laughs> supposed to uh, fill out my IMDb. <laughs> Hamish, no. I am a really big fan of the show yes. Midnight Mass. Oh yeah, I loved that show and what's interesting because like i've really only ever met you in passing full disclosure i've never watched it you could have kept that to yourself yeah no i just want to be candid you You know what you're an actor you could fake it okay oh i love that show it's good right so good you're so good thank you you're really good (laughs) see how easy that was you're my favorite character on this show Well, now it seems like you're putting down the other people that he worked with that he very well could right, have enjoyed. I'll back off that. All right. You're really good. Everybody was great. How do you remember all your lines? <laughs> Is that too far? All right, go ahead. Um, it's, it's, it's funny, and you know what? Maybe it speaks to your range as a performer, but also in the very short time that we've spent here together, I think in my mind, I have always viewed you uh, as someone who in their day-to-day life is more like that guy than uh, uh, like you know I I I guess in my mind I would not put you in a robe in in the garage I would be putting you in a robe up in front of people like a uh, like a like a sort of intelligent leader is how and you have like a casual sort of fun vibe in your real life which I was not unexpected yeah not that you're not a fun person in what you do on screen yeah. I feel like I need to thread a lot of needles with this answer. <laughs> you don't but, don't screw it up either. <laughs> no, I mean I'm a, I'm incredibly serious uh, human being. Uh, in uh, no, I'm not. Uh, I, I I I grew up at a, at a at a at a Shakespeare theater company, which should be very impressive to people. Um, I have like so much iambic pen pentameter inside of me uh if you play this back you'll find that it was all uh <laughs> rhyming and uh, <laughs> we didn't there, know it in the moment that's no, wild no there are subtle hidden hidden <laughs> consonantal rhymes all the way through my responses uh but uh and then uh it turned out i start and, and so i came out uh to uh hollywood and said check this out and uh, Hollywood was like, you're kind of funny. Uh, so uh, I ended up playing uh, more, uh, uh, some people who could tell jokes. Did but you... on the show, were you funny in Midnight 
In Midnight Mass? Now yeah. you're revealing your ignorance um, of the show. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. I've, expl- I've expressed my ignorance. Um, yeah. The, uh, uh, no, I was not uh, very funny. I was a Catholic priest who uh, eats people. Mm-hmm. Um, for a good cause, he mm-hmm. thinks. Um, and uh, but but no, that that was a serious part. There was a real like amazing, I don't know, like emotionality to that role that you brought to it, like that could have just been, oh, this is a bad person. But even I mean, like I don't know, man, it was just a great performance of even as you are making doing all of these somewhat terrible things there is there's sort of a mystery to it in some in some ways and you kind of can't figure them out for a while but i just love that like even as you kept doing bad things you were as an audience member being like i don't know i might be kind of with him on this you know what i mean and i really loved that about your performance in it well uh he i think my my sense is that when you play like a, a sort of bad guy, uh, that you, you you it's always helpful if that person thinks they're doing a good thing. Mm-hmm. So you can always be playing sort of positive actions <clears throat> through it. And he really does think that. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna cut that out. Okay, that's for so you. Nice for for you. you, I appreciate that. Um, and for the CDC, um, yeah, I I, I think uh, so. That's all. You know, you try to figure out what the positive action is and you go through it. Also, it was like a super emotional time when we shot that because we did the table read of Midnight Mass on March 11th. And I was going to be flying home the next day uh, because I had a few days off before shooting started. We were in Vancouver and I'm sitting in the airport lounge and on the TV they're saying... um, the, the Canada's closing the borders because of uh, oh my god this COVID, and uh, so then we shut down for three months, um, and then had to. I, me and my family, we drove up to uh, Vancouver around the uh, end of August, and we started shooting in September, but. Uh, it was one of the earlier shows that got back up during the pandemic. And uh, what was the uh, silver lining in that horrible dark cloud was that uh, the cast was so tightly bonded together. And the, the, the show takes place on this very remote island. Um, and it's a very tight community. And we had this very tight community while we shot it because we would be in this little uh, blue tent on the set. And that was the one place you could take off your mask. And uh, and we played a lot of cards and had a lot of jokes and got very tight. And it worked for, yeah. It's yeah. interesting. Mm. Veep, That's... similarly, we were sort of stuck in Baltimore and bonded because it was we were all living in L.A. at the time. So being isolated sometimes serves... The art serves yeah. the, the chemistry, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. That honestly, not knowing that, it makes a lot of sense because the ensemble does, the ensemble like is really incredible in that. Like it, you can, I don't know, it has a flavor of that. And and, and also Mike Flanagan, who, who created that show, it, he works with the same people over and over again. So they all know and love each other so much. So it's very easy when then they uh, have to chop each other up and stuff yeah. like that. There's a real loss. Did uh, he seems like a rad person yeah uh, like from all outward appearances he seems like a rad guy was it fun to work with him yeah uh, i mean he's phenomenal he, he he writes directs edits the the thing and you show up on set and there is a huge board that says w- uh what you're going to be shooting that day down to like the half hour of like and then we'll be turning around to here and we'll wow. be turning, going over there and It's, I mean, for me, that's very relaxing knowing that someone knows what they're doing. Uh, Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's super cool. But that said, he's not like um, super strict or tight. You feel very relaxed there. And, uh, but you know, there's a plan in place. Oh, that's cool. I've never been on a show where you could see like broken down like that. It's so cool. What, what's coming your way? Yeah. And how is it to get bloodied in a show like that? Like, because you're probably doing some gore every episode, right? We had a uh, there. Yeah, yeah. You you the because uh, when you're going to vomit the blood, it's very tricky. You've got to get the blood in your mouth, and then the Alka Seltzer, and then the water, and then you go. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Clubhouse. You know, that's a little uh, that's Trick. a little behind the gore. Uh, okay. Yeah, so How often would you have to do it? Uh, well, I'm always like one more for me, one more for me, <laughs> one more. Let's Seltzer. just do one for fun. Yeah. Did you have fangs, vampire fangs? No, no, no. no you don't need that. Uh, well, you watched the show. You watched the show. It's just been a while since you saw yeah. it, so you couldn't remember I if they were. Can't remember if you have vampire fangs. If it was like canon or not to have them. I curiously, I actually have very sharp canines in life. Mm -hmm. Right now, mm -hmm. if I smiled, which I won't, mm -hmm. you would see very sharp canine, and maybe that's why I. Maybe that's why I was cast. Never have him. H having worked with Walsh on Manhunt, mm -hmm. do you think that he would have fit in with the ensemble? Do you think he would have been good around the card table? Just no. as if he's not here. Answer the question as if he's not here. Uh, well, uh, d like I said, uh, wonderful intimacy. Matt is complicated with mm -hmm. intimacy. Mm -hmm. um, so <laughs> who knows? We'll see next time. That's a no. Yeah. That's a polite no. I appreciate, that feel, you. Yeah. I appreciate you handling that that way. Yeah, I think any time you begin an answer with, well, it's complicated. <laughs> like, you could just be like, we're just going to say no. Well, truth be told, we never got to do a scene together on the show. Oh, really? We had hang time. The uh, first time, though, but when I arrived, you were getting whiskers put on, yeah. and uh, Tobias was getting whiskers put on, and they were looking at whiskers, and, and we took a selfie Picture. for Julia, because... Tobias uh, Menzies yeah, was doing he, the the Nicole Hollow Center with Julia, and he was going back to New York to finish it. Yeah. So we took a photo and sent and it. she lost her mind. It was so many worlds collide. <laughs> yeah. Was. She was on probably just like, please don't send me this photo. Like, I can't deal with that many people that I've met before all hanging out. Yeah. yeah. And I said, pick your favorite. And I won't tell you what she said, but I was happy with the answer because <laughs> it was me. Sure. Sure. It's complicated. Uh, Tobias. <laughs> 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 Tobias Menz is speaking of shows that maybe uh, if you're listening, maybe you missed Midnight Mass. Go back and watch that. Have you guys, have either of you guys ever seen the Tobi Tobias Menz, uh, Men Menzes? Menzies? Menzies? Menzies. Tobias Menzies? I think so. I think so too. He's Menzies. in a show that was on AMC years ago, five, six years ago, called The Terror which is about the HMS terror and the HMS something else that like was like the first ships that tried to find an Arctic passage and they were lost. And I think, and it is a story about those two ships being trapped in the ice and them like kind of slowly going insane from malnutrition and also like lead poisoning. Oh my God. And also like psychosis because they're trapped in the ice for a number of years. Hilarious. It is, it is so funny. <laughs> um, it's a it's a wildly good show, and he's incredible in it. And it's like just a murderer's row of like character faces of dudes you've seen in stuff before, mm -hmm. but just everybody is at the top of their game. It's incredible. Let's uh, pretend we both saw that uh, yeah. as well. It was good. It was really good, and the the quality of the character actors was what struck me about it feels like you kind of reached for something there um, i mean i feel and the ice the fact the, that I they were stuck in the, the ice cold. yeah the whole time and the terror of i mean i guess the ship was called the terror but i but felt also there are some yes you're right there are some terrifying elements yeah there. and the insanity that ensued i mean <laughs> It was so good that way, and uh, it was. It felt like it was like six years ago too. They yeah. really dialed into that 2018 kind of tenor you know, of the world. <laughs> you know, there was a really great actor in there. His name was Hamish Linkletter. Mm. He was really good in that. I was. You're good. setting me up. I think we I have a. Think I think we, do we have a guest, Aaron? Yes, we do. Oh, this is great. I think Hamish. I think you're gonna like this. Oh dear. Hey Walsh. Hmm. Did you know that the average I bought it? Oh, hey Walsh. Hmm. Did you know that the average I bought a user earns $256 per year? Whoa. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip, so you can buy that flight you've been eyeing, that game you've been dying to do, or the fancy dinner you've been craving. That sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. Join the over 50 million users and earn cash back every time you shop from over 2,700 brands and retailers. Places like Lowe's, Macy's, Sephora, Best Buy, and many, many more. You know that I'm a big physical media guy? Yeah. You know that I'm not ashamed to admit it? Yeah. Best Buy's on there. I might pick up some discs, and I'm going to be getting them anyway. I can earn some cash back. You know what I'm going to use at Best Buy and my I bought it with? What? I'm getting some extra controllers for the PlayStation 5 so the kids can play 2v2 on the NBA K 2K. 
You know what, man? Isn't that fun? That sounds incredible. That's a good gift for the That's, kids. It's also is a good gift because they will yell at each other lefts about who has the controllers. Yeah. The fewer fights. Yeah, yeah. So right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code COMMAND when you register. So go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use code Command. That's I B O T T A in the Google Play or App Store and use code command. So, uh, you guys, uh, backstory here Steve Beckett is uh, a lawyer in Illinois. He also sits on the board of the Lincoln Museum in Illinois, and he's an expert on Lincoln and a true knowledgeable person around the subject of Lincoln and the history. And, Steve, so you know, this is sort of a panel of experts here in Los Angeles. Because Tim played Lincoln in a Taco Bell commercial that never aired. And also a, uh insurance company advertisement that did air. And so I played Lincoln twice. He's played Lincoln twice. So he stepped into, so he's embodied Lincoln mm-hmm. in a way that right. you never could. I know you're an intellectual, but you never could. <laughs> and uh, this is Hamish Linkletter, who is uh, co-starring in the Apple miniseries is it a miniseries the manhunt manhunt the limited series on apple tv plus and he played abraham lincoln over the course of uh, several episodes so he also is knowledgeable all right and so i believe what we are going to do is we are going to your walsh is going to ask us questions uh-huh. and give us each an opportunity to answer them and I, I will be the judge. Who knows Lincoln the most? So okay. this is the, this is the game: is who knows Lincoln the best. If I may interrupt again, uh, Timothy, you've played him twice or three times. What was the third time? Oh, History shit. of the World, <laughs> Part Two. That's right. You okay, probably... so I also played Lincoln. I saw that you did. It okay, was excellent. Thank you. Is the in a way, I have not seen your Lincoln yet. Was it hard to get over? someone playing him so well and then just bring your own self into the I'm glad you said hard to get over yeah it was like I was climbing you trying to see the light and I don't know that I ever got to the top of your mountain okay um Steve can you tell us a little bit about your involvement at the library in Illinois before we get to this little quiz? I want to give your bona fides. You 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 love Abraham Lincoln, right? You have a true passion for him. I've uh, I've loved him ever since I found out that uh, he practiced law and appeared in my hometown, Urbana, Illinois, where I practice law, and I've chased him my entire life. I've read everything I can get my hands on. Uh, was appointed twice to the museum under two different uh, governors was the chair of the board the first time and am on the board now for an extended term the second time. And I was the author of uh, legislation that ultimately was adopted that separated the library museum and made it an independent state agency. So I'm a, I'm a Lincoln-holic. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. And uh, you couldn't pick a better person in history. Obviously, there's so much respect and so much information about there that's been published about him he's probably one of our best known presidents isn't he yes he is yeah yes he is and so there's a lot of uh, uh fallacy about him too he's uh, quoted as saying things he never said and you know just goes on and on what before we get into this little quiz what would be one of the biggest falsehoods or misrepresentations of lincoln that you correct people about or you 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 find people speaking Um, to the one that troubles me the most was that he was racist (gasps) and that he was eternally racist um i would say he was a man who was a contemporary of his times and certainly um the uh, majority thought at the time was that uh, black people were not the equals of America in intellect or in in civic ability or responsibility, couldn't serve on jurors, couldn't vote. But Lincoln over his life, uh, the word I would use is evolved. And the reason why Abraham Lincoln was assassinated was because on the Tuesday before the assassination, he gave a speech at the White House and advocated that black men should be allowed the right to vote particularly those who had served the Union during the Civil War. And racists 
are not people who say things like that. John Wilkes Booth was in the audience and said, that's the last speech he will ever give. Yeah, Whoa. especially back then for a man to do that. That was very brave, obviously. Have you ever been to the Lincoln Head Diner in Chicago on Lincoln? It's just got like a big Lincoln Head as the sign. No, I don't believe I've been there. I've been to the Abraham Lincoln uh, bookstore in Chicago, okay, a very that, famous bookstore. That's probably better. The, the Lincoln pe- Diner has really good skillets, by the way, breakfast yeah. skillets. They're very filling. Okay. A lot I, of potato. And the nuts. pancakes are middling at best, but I would say. <laughs> I just, I'm just i trying to throw out a couple more bona fides. I'm trying to throw Hamish off, off <laughs> balance before All we right. start. I so, understand. So there's a lot of pride in this little quiz because these guys feel like they know Lincoln better than you. You've studied them. <laughs> So let's just go. I just want to say Hamish was before you got on the Zoom. Hamish was like, I know so much more. I've never met an expert that knew more than me about him. He was like really going on about it. It's really not true at all, (laughs) sir. (laughs) We're having fun. (laughs) This is sort of a comedy show. Okay. So for this first one, since we don't have a buzzer, if you think you have the answer, just say me. Okay. 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 All right. Uh, Lincoln was very well spoken. Did he speak any other languages than English? No. Correct. <laughs> Twenty points for you, Steve. <laughs> it, f- should we all get a question? Should I'm, we all it's gonna, get a, we're going to keep going. Okay. Like so should relax. we all get an answer? You can answer any time. Well, you're going to say <laughs> no now too. <laughs> Well, well, no, not to this one. <laughs> it's like on Jeopardy. If you guess first, you don't. They don't go. Okay, that's correct. How about you? Do but you... I want to make sure that Hamish is able to flex his muscle if he needs to. Uh, well, I have a follow-up related. Okay, which is, do any of you know what Lincoln's ethnic heritage was? Speculation in some places say he was part Native American. I'm gonna say. I'm just gonna jump in and say Love that it. just because of the size of his forehead. I'm going to say Irish. Uh, Hamish, what do you think? Are you Irish? Yes. So I can say that. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Good answer. <laughs> Steve, do you have any guesses? I think he's English. English? I think he's English. Okay. Steve's right again. You guys are losing big time. Okay. Feels um, like we, it feels like we've been set up to fail. <laughs> by bringing in an expert amongst <laughs> actors he's, no <laughs> he's basically dunking on you but you guys have lived inside this character i have faith you're going to do well okay. these okay. days many politicians run for election out of a need for fame or ego validation what drove lincoln to a career of public service or more specifically what was the moment or particular issue that got him engaged? i know this one okay i know this go one. ahead uh it, it was the uh expansion of slavery to uh the uh to the territories that were he 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 was in politics then he went out and then when they were going to expand uh slavery he was like over my dead body Mm. (laughs) and uh that's a good answer but not to this question i want to know (laughs) that's a minus 10 i want to know we didn't know that you could lose points for a wrong answer his first election what did he run for like what got him motivated to run in his very first election he was uh he was selected captain in the militia in the black hawk war that's the first election he won and why did he run was there something um he he was always uh, what was important to him was to be esteemed by his fellow man uh and i think it's part of it was his humble beginnings and a very poor relationship with his father who uh, you know basically farmed him out as if he was a slave and kept all the money uh mm-hmm. you know when he uh when he worked uh and and so i think lincoln wanted to be well regarded and wanted to accomplish something and and be some uh one and then when he volunteered to be in the black hawk war to his surprise uh supported by jack armstrong his friend from clary's grove he got elected as captain of the unit and he said that's the best that that's the best election i ever won you know I what i'm to... going to give half the points to hamish 
<laughs> well, I feel like I want to just, just push back there because <laughs> Steve's answer was going to be I'm, my answer. All right, that was my point too. Okay. Steve, I'm sorry. We're going to share the points on that one. Tim and you and Hamish each get five points because they, right. they were they were going to say what you were going to say. I'm yeah. worried about this contest. <laughs> it doesn't sound very honest, Steve. To me. <laughs> oh, you should see the prize. I, I'm going to withhold what the prize is when it's all over. All right. Okay. Lincoln was in fact a true hero, but he lived long before the Marvel Universe was created. If he were alive today, what superpower would Abraham Lincoln choose? This one, I think, opens it up to you guys. Okay. If he could choose a superpower. Hamish, hey, do you want to go first? Oh uh, God, I I was like I I be, I I thought like what would they ca- I thought the question was going to be who you would he be cast? You as, constantly so. want a question that you want to answer to, but you have to answer the questions I'm asking. But that's a good actor on a press tour. He's answering the question. You're right. That's that a politician too. Was asked. All right, answer whatever question you want because you're a guest. Go ahead. Uh, uh well, because I thought it would be Mr. Fantastic because he was tall. Okay. And, and stre- stretchy. Okay. That's a and, good... and, and, and yeah, and actually that is, you know, because uh, d- I mean, wouldn't you say sir, that his uh, great skill was being flexible uh, while always having a terrific spine, uh, but he was very uh, adept at, uh, d- uh, d- uh, d- uh, yeah, being flexible. I imagine him as Thor <gasps> because he, he, he always bragged that he could hold an axe out by the end of its uh, handle, right? Yeah. And that's kind of Thor-like. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. Rail splitter. One. That's actually really good. There was a there was a, a little bit of research that uh, when uh, uh, when he was laid out on his deathbed and they ripped open his blouse, he was apparently incredibly... Like uh, ripped? ripped? Yeah, yeah, from his uh, rail splitting days. And I uh, d- I actually was like, well, you guys should probably pay for a trainer then. Uh, <laughs> I love for, that. For God, me. I love so that. that uh, right. and, you know, uh, he, might be, he might be qualified to be an incredible too. Yeah, okay. I like it. Okay, him. that's good too, Steve. All right, I, Tim? I, I think... Who's the, I mean, I think I think I'm going to go Captain America and maybe this is a little on the nose, but he's somebody that so wants to serve his country. He's willing to do anything. And then when he is revealed as being ripped in the first movie with Haley Atwell, she is like, you know, sort of like so surprised. She like wants to touch his, his chest because he's so ripped. Do you remember that moment where the, mm-hmm. the thing cracks open and then Chris Evan comes out and he's like just all like straight mass. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go Captain America. I think that is a little bit on the nose. Um, but I also just I just remembered that I also auditioned for Abe Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Oh, yeah. And oh. Did, did you audition oh. for that? No. No. OK. Now, that's an incredible you were straight movie. offer yeah. and, it. and turned it down. <laughs> you I did actually... see it, Steve. You've seen that one. Oh, yes. <laughs> I saw it in the theater. That's did that funny. track you with your, your research? Did that track with your research generally? And your knowledge of him? <laughs> no. no. No, it's not. It's okay. fun. It's just pure fun. I think it All was right. a metaphor. I think Steve's going to get nine <laughs> points. Hamish, you're going to get eight, and Tim, you get minus two. I didn't Why like, would, I didn't like your America answer. I got. I didn't really see that off. movie that you were talking about. That hardly sounds like The first like appearance of uh, Captain America. I didn't see that one. Okay. So. Um, Lincoln was able to maintain the republic, even though it was split in half during the war. In recent decades, there's been third-party presidential candidates that have impacted elections. What would Lincoln do with third-party candidates today? Would he vote Um, for them? Lincoln would try to persuade people that a vote for a third-party candidate is a wasted vote. And he did that famously in the 1856 election when... um, uh, Buchanan won because of defectors from the Republican Party, the newly formed Republican Party, who voted for Millard Fillmore. Boom. Now, there's an exciting presidential name, Millard Fillmore. So he wouldn't have gone for Jill Stein. I was going to say the thing about the 1856 election as well. <laughs> All right, Tim, Famous you get the same man. amount of points as Steve. Tim, okay. I believe you. <laughs> You're gonna get. We, you're both gonna we get might have found points. a hack. We found a hack for this game. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, oh, wait. Can, yeah, I ask him, can I ask him a real quick question both yeah. in for both real life with Steve and performance wise? I, I think Daniel Day Lewis, when he performed it, he really went with like uh, the h- sort of high voice. He was sort of famed. Did you try to go for that type of voice as well? Like, did you? H- how did you perform the voice? Yeah, I think there, there's a lot of contemporaneous writing about his voice being uh, quite high and in even like grating and and his him having a sort of cackling laugh that could drive people out of the room. Oh, but wow. this might have been written by enemies of his so you sort of have to, to but it does make sense that he would have this kind of nasal resonator because he had to fill enormous spaces yeah and um and definitely uh, during the Steve, the Douglas Lincoln debates, there is writing about Douglas having this um, uh, uh, basso profundo voice, and Lincoln coming up over the top and more of an alto tenor, and and Lincoln won. And and the great thing is when you don't have terrific acoustics, your basso profundo, you lose a lot of uh, the details down there. It won't carry in the same way. So uh, oh. so yeah, we. Did, I did try to do a little bit of a higher. I, awesome. I think Hamish is right on. 50 right points. On. 50 points. That's from an <laughs> expert who sits on the board of Lincoln's library, Hamish. You should be, you really did your work, Hamish. Oh, that's awesome. That is, this is very validating for you, isn't it? And by the way, Hamish is so much better than Daniel Day Lewis. I got to tell you, he is a wonderful actor. I'm Abraham looking forward Lincoln. to seeing this to, to do the comparison. Oh, great! I Which mean, is, he meant to say the end of that was m- much better at ping pong than Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> uh, notoriously okay. poor ping pong. You know, player. Lincoln liked to play handball. You know that for sure. Of so, course, these guys knew that because Tim that. was in a Taco Bell commercial as Lincoln, so of course he did the research. He also loved to ride a penny farthing in search of some Taco Bell. That's something I knew about him. He <laughs> or loved the, the penny farthing. That's interesting, the handball. I didn't know that one. Um, he should talk to my kids. Uh, was Lincoln uh, Was Lincoln as uh, just sneeringly indifferent to a slicer uh, on the handball court as my kids are? Or an atomic bomb? An A-bomb? They hate the slices and they hate the A-bombs, and I'm sure Lincoln did as well. <laughs> I don't well, I'm not. I'm not sure they had handball courts. It was a little more rudimentary. Okay. And so I'm not. I don't know about the slicer <laughs> aspect, but well, uh, he was long armed and pretty darn good. I yeah, I could see that. Seeing how these, seeing how they talk to some California fourth graders, and you'll know a lot more about the slices and the a bombs. I love it. Um, As someone who grew up on a farm and who witnessed and understood the symbiotic relationship between man and animal, would Lincoln be a fan of the old school Planet of the Apes movies or the new reboot trilogy? I'm going to jump right in here. I think the the reboot trilogy really like does a good job exploring the depths of emotions of two warring factions with Mm -hmm. some empathy toward both sides. And like, you know, do we have to be in this sort of war? And like, couldn't we? Couldn't we come together? Is there a way to peace? I think he would be a huge fan. And also, another thing, uh, Abe Lincoln was a big mocap guy. He kind of like any time there was like some motion capture that was used for, for animation it? and performance, he was kind of a sucker for it. He so that's my answer. He would have loved to meet Andy Serkis. That, yeah. That's incorrect. <laughs> uh, and I'll tell you. I love this heated uh, rivalry uh, between the Lincolns. Uh, he he would have gone for the reboot, but because of uh, Charlton Heston, he was opposed to the original because of... Uh, Chuck Heston's uh, politics. Oh, wow. he was. Yeah, that's he couldn't swallow that man as a human being, let alone suspend his disbelief as a fictional. Yeah. How about you, Steve? Any preference on the Planet of the Apes? <laughs> I, I guess I would I would describe Blinken as more of a traditionalist. <laughs> and I think the original Planet of the Apes a little more traditional than the later one. So. Uh, that's my belief. It's anyway. embarrassing, but you got that one wrong, Steve. These guys, <laughs> these guys crushed you on that question. I know, yeah. All right. People are wondering if you're truly a Lincoln expert at this point, but we're gonna keep we're gonna keep going with it. I just got a text from the board, and they're rethinking this second term. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Um, Lincoln 
had a tremendous ability to collaborate with people of varying talents and points of view. How might Lincoln have handled the whole Justin Fields situation differently? <laughs> oh God, oh. That, that is a good question. I wasn't expecting. Yeah, that's so, a very that is a uh, that is an excellent question. So we'll go um, around the horn. Lincoln, Every, yeah, go ahead, Steve. You're the Lincoln, expert. All right, so Lincoln would have. Uh, Lincoln would have brought. Uh, Let me interrupt. Justin I'm sorry Fields to interrupt into... you. Sorry to interrupt you because some of our fans, <laughs> some of our fans who are listening, might not know who Justin Fields is. Yes, I think that's it's yeah. important to provide. Contextualize. Justin Fields was a first draft pick for the Chicago Bears. He was the future of the franchise. They kept investing in him, getting better. We got three seasons out of him, and then this year, since we have the first draft pick next year, the Bears just launched him to Pittsburgh, and we got no value for him. So that's sort of context for anyone who doesn't know Justin. Go ahead, Steve. Sorry to interrupt. All right. So uh, my uh, my son is a high school teacher and a coach and is crushed that the Bears let Justin Fields go. He felt Justin Fields was at the beginning of a wonderful career, and he feels that he's going to be a superstar someplace else where – and the Bears are going to make no progress because this is the sort of thing that the Bears have continued to do. And as I say, Justin would have uh, uh, been brought into the White House to sit down with uh, Lincoln, uh, uh, similar to George McClellan, uh, to uh, uh, said that he's done a good job of preparing the Army uh, for battle, but there actually needs to be a battle. And that's what Lincoln would have done with Justin. Oh, wow. That's a great answer, guys. Good luck. Uh, Hamish. Um, now, this is a guy who's never played Lincoln. He studied him and read every yeah. book there is. So take with yeah. a grain of his opinion. I've, his never, opinion. Yeah. I've never felt Lincoln like you guys have. Yes. <laughs> I feel him right now. Oh, my God. You're channeling him? Oh, my God. Let us speak to Abraham. Justin Fields. And you know Justin Fields' history, too. Wait, but is it, was the question, how would he have handled the situation? Yeah, the whole run. Well, I... well, If he was GM oh in all those God. years and up to this moment. I, I mean, look, I think that uh, the Luke Getz, I mean, that the offensive coordinator, that was that was a problem. I mean, they were just like running all these, uh, these little dinky passes that were like undermining his confidence so much of the time it was a very frustrating uh field's term i'm very happy he's ending up in pittsburgh because it seems like russell wilson will be there for a minute and then it will be fields team in the future that's my hope um, but I felt sad about it. By the way, I wore this T-shirt. I was hoping we'd talk about the Bears for a minute because I've got the. I don't know if you can. Oh see Oh my God! The, are you a Bears guy? Yeah, it's this. This is a McMahon Peyton '86 <laughs> uh, campaign. Is uh, it from 1986? No, it's from like Tuesday. Okay. Uh, but uh, that's a you know what? Shirt. That's Thanks. a winning ticket. That's a great shirt. That's a winning ticket. But why is McMahon on the top of the ticket and not Peyton on the top of the ticket? I, well, they it's always favor the quarterbacks. That's wrong. They, I would rather have Peyton as president. What I loved about that president. answer because mm-hmm. he ev- channeled Lincoln. He by channeled. The way. He, he was answered it as I. A, yeah, I was doing that. Yeah, and I think that you. We, I didn't even realize it because you're That's just you're like, an actor. You it's don't even, just there. You're not acting. I'm just a vessel. You're a vessel. Here's the thing. I'm going to answer the question that I wish you asked. <laughs> smart, always smart and positive. Reed Richards. <laughs> Reed Richards, the Fantastic Four. I think that when I I should have, I think I was going to try to do this in in first person, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. I think Abraham Lincoln, obviously, he can see over the offensive line. I think as I I think that if Abraham Lincoln had played quarterback, Great. he would have been a sort of pro. They wouldn't have even known what to do with him because I think he would have had a sort of Robert Griffin the Third type type of career of like he's just got those long legs. He can like really run. Incorrect again. Oh my God! It's Randall Cunningham. Oh, I mean, it's Randall you Cunningham. See that You're right. Huge, yeah, huge wind up and those long strides. He's down the field yeah. in like three steps. I honestly, I, I, I wish I could advocate for myself in the way that honestly, in the way that Lincoln advocated for the country. <laughs> I, 
I think Hamish is a hundred percent right in that in that regard. He has answered that question right correctly twice. Two times. So two times. Hamish gets ten points. You get minus five Wait, again. He him, got and Steve gets points. Steve gets ten points as well. He got fifty points for something. Hamish answered two questions been, right and got two. I only got ten. I gave myself. Yeah, but it's harder that. on Zoom. He's working against. He doesn't have a home field advantage. Like, okay. You two are sitting with the question asker. That's a big advantage. So okay. I've kind of. No, that I makes think sense. You guys, I think you guys want true false instead of essay. <laughs> He's a lawyer. Can't you tell? I love it, Steve. All right, here's one. I'll do one more. And this is sort of an ethical question. Um, Lincoln loved to tell a humorous story. Hypothetically, okay, imagine this hypothetical. Mm -hmm. If every time Lincoln told a story, he knew it would cause a random Union soldier to endure some serious tooth pain, would he still have told as many comic tales? Do you understand the question? Uh, of course not, but I'll answer it anyway. <laughs> you understand the show perfectly, Steve. <laughs> right. And so uh, Lincoln was very self-deprecating. And so if he could tell a story to make somebody else feel good, he would do so. And so the story he would tell would be, uh, I was riding into town out in the country, and a man and a woman were working in the field, so I stopped to talk to them. And the woman looked at me and said, you are the ugliest human being I have ever seen. <laughs> and I responded, I'm sorry, ma'am, there's nothing I could do about it. And she said, well, you could stay home. <laughs> 50 points. <laughs> That's 50 right there, yeah. Uh, somebody asked me this question recently. If every time this feels blue, and I'm very sorry, but this is the question. I didn't ask the question. Like, if every time that you ejaculated, there was a 50% chance of, Hamish, I'm sorry. I, but again, I want to reiterate, I was not the one who came up with the question. If every time you ejaculated, there was a 50% chance that a dolphin would die, would you ever do it? And I think the answer is 50-50 doesn't mean ever. <laughs> I apologize, Steve. I didn't know my co-host would go this way, but we're going to stay with so it. So I think like 50-50 doesn't mean that it's going to happen every okay. single It could actually happen zero times. Right. So I think... W Hit with with Lincoln being a lawyer, yeah. Let's say he was a Lincoln lawyer. If if Lincoln being a lawyer, he would understand that there is a probability. There is a probability that zero Union soldiers would ever get tooth pain, right? And so uh, therefore, he, he would, would still tell, tell the story. The story. Wow. Yes. That yeah. was... And honestly, people's teeth were fucking awful back then. They probably always hurt. Like so, like it's blue on black. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's they tears were on a river. Pain. Yeah. All right. Anyway. I'm going to give you 50 points too, Hamish. Uh, no, no, <laughs> just no. I, I, I mean, that was not worth the response. I mean, the buildup. I mean, I guess it was. It got into physics, but no, no. You know, when I hear a blue joke, mm -hmm. it makes me feel blue. You don't uh, like a blue joke? You get sad. Yeah. You get sad. Yeah. Um, Gail and the blue one in the <laughs> Civil War. Blue in the gray. Oh, <laughs> way to save it. Gail uh, Kucinich is the one who connected us, Steve, and she told me her favorite Lincoln story is the one where the abused the abused woman was uh, accused sure. of murder. Sure. You want to tell that sure. one? I'm teeing you. Yeah, up. sure. So um, now, now you've uh, you caught me at a at a weak moment. The lady's name is uh, it's a case in Metamora. And uh, the woman is accused of murdering her husband. She hit him over the head with a sto stick of firewood after he had abused her for years. There was a jury trial with all the jurors were male and the judge was a jerk. And uh, the, the, they had a break and Lincoln took her uh, uh, down to a lower level and uh, told her that uh, things uh, didn't look very well. And they got back into court and she was gone. And the judge said, where is uh, where is your client? And he said, well, 
Uh, she told me she was thirsty, and I responded that there was um, there was mighty fine water in Tennessee, and she climbed out the window. <laughs> He let her out the window because <laughs> he knew she wasn't going to get off. Isn't that cool? And yeah. that's the Postville Courthouse. I'm going to uh, like Thanks. this is going to be a reductive thing to say, but I well, think Abra- I think Abraham Lincoln fucking rules. Like he fucking rips. Yeah. That dude's great. Yeah, yeah. he's the best. Well, right. do we have a final tally on points? Steve, I think you won, barely, by one point. Hamish, you're in second, and oh. Tim, you're in a distant third. Okay. I'd We're like going to maybe see. get you a T-shirt of our podcast, Steve, for joining us. Mm-hmm. And you two actors, do you have any questions f- for Steve before we let him go? Because you, who knows, you may play Lincoln again, or I don't know. I, I, I had a question. Uh, the... Um uh, wonderful uh, costume designer for uh, the the series uh, said that uh, Lincoln and and we did this that he wore his riding boots like every day and it seems like it would be hard to play handball in riding boots um, so I was wondering if that was apocrypha or but, but I I mean I wore them all the way through the well, thing he certainly wore boots and one of the problems that he had was that he was so tall that his pants uh, never really reached his socks. And so the riding boots were very helpful. <laughs> oh, that makes so much that's sense. Practical. That's great. That's, that's a sock hack. Because people would yeah. call him a clam. You got your clam diggers on, they used yeah. to say to him. Yeah. Right. Very so. offensive to people from New England. I just want to let people know sure. that. Sure. I am from, from New England. Where are you from? New England. You're from New England? So you I wasn't had the offended same. at you were. all by it, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did you have a question for Steve at all? Well, the question that I have is that before, thank you, number one. Yeah. The first one is a statement. Number one, thank you so much for being here. Uh, and the question that I have is, could you let everyone know again, uh, you, uh, the board that you work for, where they can find out more information about sure. Lincoln? This, yeah. this is the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library and Museum in Springfield, Illinois. And uh, we've been in existence for 20 years now. Uh, and it is, uh, I'm, I'm thinking the last meeting, I think we are the most attended presidential library in the United States. I mean, let's be honest. We have more people come to our library and museum than any other presidential library in the United States. That, that does make sense. Come, come. It's a wonderful place. It's a wonderful experience. Bring the family. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, uh, is, uh. Uh, is a god, right? For us, for America. Yeah, yeah. for democracy. He's like a god. Yeah. I will come visit you and I'll reach out and, and do me a favor when you do watch the Apple series, let us know what you think of it. I'll, I'll relay it. I, I'm curious what your take is on the whole representation. I will do. I read the book. I love the book. Yeah, the book's great. I love great. the book. And don't forget to get one of the good skillets at the Lincoln Head Diner the next time you're oh, in Chicago. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to be Lincoln, looking for that. It's in Lincoln Square, where, weirdly enough, I think. But anyways, yeah. all right. Well, thank you, Steve. You're very kind to you step bet. in. Nice thank to, you, guys. Nice to thank meet you. you. All right. All right. We can take off for a second. Yeah. We'll take a, a, a brief break. Brief break. And then we'll wrap it up. How is everything going? Jesus, he made us seem like idiots. <laughs> I, you had a few like great answers in there i loved the thing about riding boots and i loved the i thought your answer was good about what like i think when you're like what prompted him to get involved oh, yeah. in the election i thought you're i think you guys were kind of talking about different things but i think he, he was talking was no but he was totally talking about uh his first uh the first time he was ever elected to anything yeah um but uh i think but then i couldn't remember the word for like the the territory the unincorporated states the new states that were coming in so i still so looked like an like actor they were like the missouri compromise uh, going to expand slavery into like the western territory uh, yeah yeah, you know? yeah it was uh the missouri it, compromise i don't i thought it was the something the kansas nebraska act or something oh, like okay. that uh that there was uh, that uh, but that was the idea was that like uh and he was like if can if kansas i think it was kansas or maybe it was kentucky maybe he was born in kentucky if that became a slave state it was he was like absolutely not i mean he was totally opposed uh 
to uh, he was opposed to slavery, but he wasn't going to interfere with slavery in the in the states where it already yeah. existed. He just didn't want it to expand. And uh, that, that was what he said in the first inaugural. But by the time you get to the second inaugural, uh, he really, as he was saying, has totally evolved. Wow. And uh, uh, he's, but he, he was also like really careful not to shoot the first shot of the Civil War. It was like, it had to be the South aggressing, starting the thing. Yeah. Um, because, uh, uh, because he was so constitutionally minded like it made sense that you could have this war but you couldn't start the war to stop slavery yeah and and uh so it it, it was a war of aggression by the south against the north um <clears throat> that's Even how it had to be framed to start and then by and but by the second inaugural he's saying this is clearly this war is about slavery, Nikki Haley. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, she's listening. She's she, our next guest. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can yeah pick it up there. Yeah, no. we can talk about no. Lincoln some more nah. in the show. Nah. No, no. Nah. All right. Um. Uh, hey, Aaron, are we still recording? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, I want to get Price Waterhouse in because so I feel like scoring? I need to see the math. I feel like I need to see them at. Here. You said I was a distant. This is my scoring sheet. Nobody it's, can read that. It's very idiosyncratic. It looks like it looks like abstract doodling. You really typed up those questions. Huh? I did. I thought they were off the top of your head. No, I did some homework. <laughs> um, um, oh, I wanted. And by the way, I'll just. Steve's not here anymore. And um, I wrote, was trying to. <laughs> you pick wrote down a, Thor and Mr. Fantastic. <laughs> These are your notes. I guess and, you didn't write down Captain America? Uh, and, <laughs> I just didn't care about your answer. <laughs> I was uh, hitting you boys down a little bit to make our guests feel comfortable because no, you know. You know. Yeah. I didn't want him to feel like. Uh, but we have to send him a shirt because he did win. Yeah, I mean, we'll he dunked on you guys. You guys More so shirts. you, Tim. He definitely You were out of your me. league. Hamish seems to understand the, no. the Lincoln. I don't think your Taco Bell immersion really gave you an understanding <laughs> of the man that is a god to our democracy. Well, yeah, I mean, but again, it was a short lead time. I didn't have a lot of time for research, and they were also like, can you ride a penny farthing? And I was like, yeah, sure, and I couldn't, so I had to learn how to ride a penny farthing. As and Lincoln. Were, and they were like, yeah. Nick Braun is in the other room. He's waiting to walk in here. Do uh, you, you know what? when I actually like started learning this not a bit when I started when I was like they were like all right cool this is how you ride a penny farthing and they were just like yeah you just get up on it and I was like oh okay and I fucking ate shit off of a penny farthing <laughs> and you immediately saw the people being like uh we gotta like find like but the thing is all the prosthetics had been made for me specifically so I knew I had time <laughs> they like could they couldn't do no better in a couple hours you, you know what smart. I mean yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, Nick Braun was on Tech Avail. But yeah, Nick Braun was definitely <laughs> like Tech Avail Nick... for a taco. I mean, <laughs> for Taco Bell. You know what Sorry, I? Sorry, can we get Nick Braun on Taco Avail? I mean, Tech Avail. <laughs> taco Avail. I wanted to ask him about Mary Todd because I feel like she's the one who gets the bad rap. Like historically, like I was asking, what are the things that people get wrong about Lincoln? I feel like she gets an unjust sort of historical pers uh, smash. I mean, the the biography that I read when it was like the Mary Todd chapter, it just had women, right? And yeah. then it was like next chapter. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was really nice in the series. Uh, Monica Bolecki was uh, who wrote the series was really determined to have uh, it be uh, about a loving marriage, and that Mary Todd uh, was going to be fairly treated. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, this woman who loses two of her yeah. children, uh, one at four and one at 11, uh, I think, and uh, etc. And, 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 and et cetera lived forever, <laughs> which made everyone really crazy. Um, but uh, and guess who plays Mary Todd? Don't say who do you think is going to play Mary Todd in the series? Sally Field. No, too old for Wait, Hamish. Did she play Hamish? Is uh, she against... did? Uh, uh, she did in the in the in, in the Lincoln Lincoln. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, in the Daniel Day. Uh, okay, the Daniel okay. Day Lincoln. So I'm. Th so you're saying for Hamish? So I'm going to think a contemporary of Hamish. Yeah, or yeah. just a good actor. Yeah, Ariana she's, she's great. Grande. 
Todd? It was Mary Todd? Yeah. No. She bring us something. That's She'd outside something the box. That's okay. a little too far. Who did? Who did? Tell him who's your... Uh, mo- L- uh, Lily Taylor. Oh, that's a that's great. Isn't that great? Great. great. The most lovely, most loveliest of all lovely. And uh, I never I, got to meet her on the set, ever. Yeah, that shame. was that was. Oh, no, purpose. she didn't. Did you poison me? Did you poison <laughs> her? I poisoned the Matt Walsh waters. <laughs> I, 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 don't talk to him. He's a jerk. <laughs> He's just like, I don't even want to tell you why. Just like, I, don't know, I just don't believe him. It's not. I mean, it's up to you. Come, it's come, up come, to come you. Lily, Lily, come, 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 come here. <laughs> He's coming. Me, He's I, coming. He's coming. I saved you. I saved you. Yeah. Lily Taylor and I did a, uh, a movie uh, uh, called Live from Baghdad. Uh, it was like an HBO movie about CNN uh, when the uh, in Gulf War One while the why they were there and uh uh so we were friends for, I, I mean i've known her for like 20 years so that was really nice oh that's really cool yeah but uh, yeah well, she does get good uh representation in the in the lincoln ser- in this series manhunt and the book i guess probably as well well not the one i read <laughs> not the one you read but in recent history <laughs> she's getting her just desserts and a more fair-minded approach to uh who she was and what she endured yeah, yeah. she lost so much yeah I I don't care if it's a dad joke. <laughs> the joke, other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play, mm-hmm. is an incredible joke when somebody's complaining about something. You know what I mean? Or like, yeah. or like, I don't know. I really enjoy it. Yeah. And whenever anybody pulls it out, I'm like, that's great. Yeah. Solid. Yeah. yeah. It's a solid joke. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, it references a moment <laughs> in history we all know, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's very yeah. few jokes that I think do that uh d- is that joke contemporary i mean is that that's a dad joke from the 1860s can you imagine being the first guy to pull that out yeah god you probably felt like a genius <laughs> <laughs> it was actually andrew johnson uh, <laughs> it was his vice president <laughs> Can you box. imagine if like Lyndon B. Johnson made that joke on the plane with Jack, like when his hands on the Bible and Jackie's in the dress? <laughs> He's like, other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how is the play? How is Dallas other than that? I'm sorry, Amish. Too I soon. feel like I'm giving you a poor representation of myself. I think no. you're giving a really solid one. Okay. You're doing it. <laughs> you're doing it for comedic effect. It's so obvious. Um, I, I feel like I had a question for you a moment ago. But then I, oh, no, I remember what it was. What brought you, what started your affinity for the Chicago Bears? Um, uh, that very impressive theater company that I grew up in. There were a bunch of Chicago actors, uh, fortunately, there, like 84, 85. And uh, they were like, hey, kid, there's this guy called Sweetness. And then they were like, hey, kid, there's this guy called Fridge. Um, were these guys, were they newsies? <laughs> <laughs> hey kid, get over here! Everyone is this who? guy named the Sweetness. <laughs> I may not have like a real accurate uh, recollection of my childhood, but mostly it was musical, and uh, mostly people <laughs> wore that hat. So yeah, <laughs> the newsy hat. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, but uh, no, they were awesome, and 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 I remember like that fucking night. That Monday night, when those awful dolphins, yeah, uh, I I wept. I like I couldn't believe it. Yeah, it was so so sad. And actually, my best friend was a Dolphins fan because uh, we, we grew up in uh, Western Massachusetts. So you know, it was like no one's going to be a Patriots fan. So we all, I think we we uh, me and my best friends we. They picked like for teams for random reasons, um, and I, there was like a Bengals fan because of the icky shuffle and because Bengals are cute little tigers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I chose it for very manly reasons because we were the most aw- awe-inspiring, fear-inducing defense the world has ever known. That's why I. You're chose still a Bears fan, yeah. It well, takes... see, you grew up in a theater company and still became an actor. Yeah, yeah. Because it's wonderful. It is. It is. It is. It is. It is. Think about all the terrible jobs you could have in life. Like we complain about it, but it, there's so many other terrible jobs in the world. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I had a job. I, I when I was first starting out, I, I had a job filing death certificates, and that was hard. <gasps> 
do, do. Really? Yeah, because everyone was dead. Filing the, meaning, do you have to like? It was take, like old timey with like the file, the uh, file just cabinet, organizing and I would just of? well, yeah, it's just alphabetizing. Oh, okay, was really all I did. Did you just find that challenging? Is that why it was hard? It was really hard. I was like, I need to go. <laughs> I need a career in the theater because this ABC is <laughs> so tricky. You can get the pentameter, you can get the rhythm, oh, totally, totally, but the letters in order, utterly illiterate, yeah. but uh, very rhythm savvy. Are are the bereaved dropping off the certificates do you have to have like a bedside manner no no oh the bereaved i, I thought you meant the, the the dead people were no. dropping <laughs> off because that would be pretty uh super special no uh i just it was like it was like i was like a temp i mean i was a temp and that was the one job that i got given mm. the back office oh yeah put those away in order yeah, yeah. We just got a pile of them. Well, this actually dovetails into our two classic questions, if we just want to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what job, career, profession, if you weren't an actor, yeah. could you see yourself doing, or at least see yourself being curious and stimulated? Quarterback. By Chicago Bears. Okay, I think <laughs> I, that was so easy. I feel like I would be stimulated by that. But I mean, have you ever played a quarterback, or I mean, been a quarterback on a football team? Um, I, I'll tell you, uh, we 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 would play football every Thanksgiving, um, like Field of Dreams, uh, uh, back in Western Massachusetts. All the kids from my class sort of come out of the clouds, and the, not the clouds; they're not dead. They come out of the fog, the snow, the, and we all meet at this parking lot because there's lights there. It's like a gravel parking lot, <laughs> and uh, we've been up until the pandemic. We were playing there and we got old but uh i insist on being quarterback all the time oh. um uh, except on defense i mean i'll play defense yeah. uh, and then i get tie tie and so then i'm like mm, i'll be quarterback now uh and my i have a record of 30 and one maybe <gasps> Went really? victories on things the turkey yeah. bowl. Wow, yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. And you're playing touch. You're not tackle on the gravel, right? But everyone else does touch. I tackle, <laughs> uh, or or my touch is more of a shove uh, oh. with momentum. No, I don't like you. Uh, no, the guys that's don't so either. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. wouldn't. I wouldn't invite you back. That's rude. no. Yeah. What uh, what town in Western Massachusetts? Great Barrington. Great, Great Barrington. Great Barrington. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Simon's Rock College. That's the gravel uh, parking lot right okay. there. Is your mom or family still there? Uh, they've uh, I get, d deceased. So mom is not there. Okay. Sorry <laughs> to bring that up. You Sorry didn't to have to up. file her <laughs> death certificate, report, did you? I can't find it, and it's so hard now wrapping up her estate. These are true stories. Um, but uh, no, we, oh my uh, God, was it recent? Uh, three years ago. Oh, okay. I was my my gosh. Sorry, a moment ago I was like, oh, if this happened a week ago, I'm going to be very upset that no, I no. But joke. like a week ago, I was trying to get the death certificate so I could wrap up one of the bank accounts. I mean, this is like. It's forever because she yeah. died in Scotland. I'm going to go into even more details Please. on this. No, that was it. Okay. But uh, it was complicated. You should get on the phone with the guy and be like, it's so simple. A, B, C, D, <laughs> and then you get to L, and then you do it again. <laughs> Teach them how to <laughs> organize deaths. And the guy's like, I'm sorry. I'm going to Hollywood. Be an actor. This is too hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, my best friend, <laughs> he, he, his family is there. That's where we all go. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the other question that we ask people is how many members of Congress do you think you could beat up? Oh, wow. And I'll even say, I'll open this up to Lincoln's Congress. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. What if I switched it up? Yeah, because yeah, I can name then. every member of that Congress. <laughs> yeah, you my, did so much research. So this, much bro. research. I know. I don't know. Like, uh, I, like who couldn't you beat up in Congress? I mean, like, who are the people that you couldn't beat up? I'm, I think there's one UFC guy. There's yeah. one, like, dude. Yeah. Oh, really? Who was, like, at one point a UFC fighter. Uh -huh. I don't think he's a very good congressman. <laughs> 
and I don't know how long he'll be. Or the wrestling coaches. I feel like they're no, I challenging. Think, was Jim Jordan a wrestling coach, or did he just ignore a wrestling coach raping students? He was the, he was the 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 basketball coach, right, for Ohio State. What? No, I don't know. Was he the? Is that Woody Hayes? <laughs> what, what are we doing here? <laughs> no, I think Hayes Jim Jordan. Football. I'm just trying to generally bring into the public consciousness that Jim Jordan ignored sexual assault, yeah. allegedly, yeah. Yeah. while at Ohio State. Yeah, but it was Ohio State. But it was Ohio State or Ohio University. I think it's Ohio State. Okay. Yeah. Buckeye. The Buckeyes. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's one of your classic questions? Yeah. Yeah. Although, honestly, kind of feeling, thinking about retiring. <laughs> because <laughs> you don't have a good, passion what? for it like you used to. You no, I think when I first question. started, I was like, oh, that's going to be a great question. Then really, everybody's like, 45%. And I'm like, I don't know. I think you could do better. And they're like, 90. And I'm like, great. And that's really how all of it goes. It's a, but I, I didn't know. I should have done percent, uh, percentile. That would have been quicker. Yeah, I think we'd just go percentiles. Uh, okay. 99. Great. Yeah. yeah, it isn't a great question. It's sort of getting weaker. It's like weak It has. It's, it's like weak and tea. It's like weakened as it's going along. Yeah, because yeah. we don't really care about... Like, he could say nothing, and we, we're not invested in his answer in a way. Right? <laughs> I think there was something to it at the beginning, and it has, it has gone past its expiration date. Whereas, and I'll give Walsh a compliment. Oh, nice. I think your they question opens up opens up a, 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 a view, a worldview into the person. You want to have an open-ended question. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to have a number. Well, yeah. we could... You find design. a wallet in the street. Yeah. It has $5,000 in it. What do you do? Whoa. Uh, well, I'd probably go to the closest store or person that is uh -huh. selling things nearby and uh -huh. say, uh, I found this wallet. What do you have for $5,000? <laughs> <laughs> I throw out the garbage can and keep the wallet. That's, That's what right. I do every time. <laughs> Good. Okay, so you're there at the store. Oh no, and I'm like, uh, this. Uh, I found this wallet with all this money in it. So somebody's probably going to come back over here, around here, and say, uh, "I lost my wallet." So you so leave it with I the person at the to, store. Yeah, I give it to the nearest. Uh, the nearest. Uh, yeah. What vendor. if you get a vibe off that person? Like, oh, this guy's not going to do anything but take the money as soon as I walk out the store. Mm. Like you just get that vibe. You're like. Uh, you know what? I'll hold on to it. Here's my number. Like the person's played by you. Yeah. And yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. like you're later, <laughs> you're trying to explain <laughs> that guy fine. to Lily Taylor later. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Unethical is yeah. how I would sum up kind of like ha, Kind of has like an insurance fraud vibe, but I have no yeah. proof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's still probably, I, I, don't, I, I would be nervous to carry that wallet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, I think, I, honestly, going back to what you said at the beginning, I think this was a great episode. I yeah, think it proved to it be a great a episode. lot of weird, really? yeah, a lot yeah. of weird places. Is God, there, I kept thinking, these guys think this is going badly, really badly, no. and that they've cursed themselves at the beginning by saying it was going to go well. And they're probably kicking themselves for self-jinxing. Well, the good news is there's editing in podcasts. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. Tim goes in and he'll probably cut out most of what I say and most of what you say, and it'll uh -huh. just be Tim monologizing and, everybody and dunking on us. Like, yeah, just, one of the just comments, being witty. One of the comments that we've gotten in the past, and I do feel like I like it's an audio medium, and people have been like, I think Tim talks too much. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't said that in a while. <laughs> they haven't said that in a while. I have actively tried to not talk as much. You're sensitive to that, I but. <laughs> Thank you, Hamish. Uh, watch Manhunt. Anybody listening or watching this, uh, you can it's find very that good. on what is the name of the service? I don't want to get it wrong. I would say Apple TV, but it's not Apple TV. You just have to put a plus at the end. So you say Apple TV Plus? Yeah. Okay. Apple but then TV that plus. seems like that seems like you're going to add something else. You know, Apple TV Plus. Like, what happens if they go to Apple TV? Is it not going to be there? Why? Well, Okay. An Apple TV is a thing. Oh, yeah. Okay. Once you put a plus on it, it becomes a, a channel, a subscription. I think thing? once you put the plus on it, then you are able to get the original content with your subscription. Okay. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I just texted my father, Tim Cook, oh, yeah. and he said, "Very good, son. You did a great job. I'm proud of you." And when I said, "Is this what Apple TV Plus means?" 
Yeah. Thank you for showing up to our podcast because you come from Legacy Money. Yeah. I just can't believe you're invested in this little show. Uh, You know what? I mean, you do what you love and you never, you know, you never work a day in your life. (laughs) Oh, amen to that. Amen to that. (laughs) Thank you guys for being here. Thank you to our wonderful guest, uh, Hamish Linkletter. Uh, Steve Uh, Beckett at the Lincoln Library in Illinois. uh, You you can find us wherever uh, podcasts happen. And you can also find us on the website, youtube.com. Um, and you can also find just rate us five stars and leave a review um, and let us know which uh, Lincoln you thought was the best. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were. I thought best. you were. Oh, yeah. All right. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>